Hi everyone, it's Shakara. I decided to try out something new by creating mini lessons on topics that are relevant to early childhood educators. So stay tuned for the first one and be on the lookout for future episodes. I hope you enjoy. The first lesson in my mini math lesson series is subitizing. If this is a topic that you've never heard of, you want more information on, or could use a few age-appropriate ideas to add to your toolbox, then you are in the right place. This video will focus on subitizing in pre-K and kindergarten. As an early childhood educator, you understand that having an early foundation with math skills is necessary for development and future academic success. We often hear about typical math skills like 2D shapes, number recognition, creating patterns, and even beginning to solve simple problems. But it's very rare that subitizing is discussed. You may even be thinking to yourself right now, what exactly is subitizing? Subitizing is just a fancy word that means quickly recognizing how many dots are in a set without having to count the items. Sounds pretty simple, huh? Let me test your subitizing skills. Look at the dots that I flash on the screen and tell me how many you see. How many did you see? You're right, there were four. Here's another one. How many did you see that time? Did you say two? You're doing pretty good, if so, let me make it a tad bit more challenging. You've got it, there were six. Okay, let's do one more. How many did you see there? Yep, there were seven. Very good. You did good on that pop quiz, and your subitizing skills are super. As minor as it may seem, subitizing is actually a critical skill for young children to acquire. It creates a meaningful understanding of quantity, and it builds visual number sense. By age four, children can usually subitize up to four, and depending on how much exposure you have, they can rapidly exceed this number. There are two different types of subitizing, perceptual subitizing and conceptual. Perceptual subitizing is the closest to the original definition. It's stating how many without needing to count or group. Perceptual subitizing can be done without any learned mathematical knowledge. Conceptual subitizing is slightly more complex. It is still recognizing how many without counting, but this type is done visually with grouping quantities. For instance, people might recognize an eight domino without counting because they see each side of the domino as four individual dots and as four dots on both sides to total eight. In pre-K and kindergarten, don't get focused on which type of subitizing your students are doing. Just make sure you expose them to lots of subitizing opportunities to build their skills. Start out with visuals of just one or two and gradually increase the amounts. There are lots of ways to incorporate subitizing in your day. Let me show you a few. Idea number one, try face-up concentration where children have to match cards with the same number of dots. Only, the cards are not face down, like the game concentration you're probably used to, they're face up. Check out the link in my blog post to see a video of this from Erickson Institute, and you can also download these templates you see for free. Idea number two. Try what I call dot flash, where you have dot plates prepared, and you quickly flash them to your children asking them to tell you the amount they saw. This can be a great warm-up activity or filler if you have a few minutes somewhere in your day. Your dots can be organized like dots on a die, dots on a tens frame, or in random order. Dot flash can also be done with dot cards like you see here, made out of cardstock. Idea number three. Play lots of games with dice and dot cubes that you make. Both dice and dot cubes can help with subitizing. These are subitizing mats I made for children to practice rolling a die, quickly telling how many they rolled, and then placing a number of pom-poms or counters on the mat. These can also be found on my blog post for free. 
The last point I want to give you is to be careful not to get too cutesy with your subitizing. It's best to stick to dots or circles so your students can focus on the quantity of items and not the details of your images. These examples are super cute for counting ideas, but can be very confusing and distracting for subitizing. Well, that's all for my mini lesson on subitizing. If you like the ideas shown, be sure to grab all of the free templates at www.the.com. Thanks for tuning in.